bananas, we packed some snack bags, we got water, we're giving out pizza, ponchos if it rains. We have people out there with like cold water coolers and like snacks and give it to people and telling them to stay strong and stay in line. This is what they're doing. They're doing this on purpose so that your voice is not heard. I mean, just like, this is going on right now in 2020. It's really ridiculous. Voter suppression has come up quite a bit during this election cycle. President Trump tonight, after floating the idea of delaying the November election that he does not have the power to do, is renewing his attacks on mail-in voting. Despite no evidence, it leads to widespread voter fraud. From the president's warnings about voter fraud via mail-in ballots, to the new Tennessee law that could strip some protesters of their voting rights, or the messy primaries in states like Georgia, Wisconsin, and Louisiana. When I think about voter suppression and people ask me, well, when did it start? And I say it started when Africans were enslaved and forced to come to this country. There has never been a period of time in this country that there was not voter suppression. We would love for you all to one, really share about some of the issues that are going on in your community. Why is this election important? Why is it important that South Georgia is not left out of process? Because you ain't, because black voters matter. We Latasha can't... Brown is a longtime political organizer and co-founder of Black Voters Matter, an organization aiming to boost black voter turnout in presidential and local elections. Right. We are going to vote. Their work includes increasing voter registration, voter education, and advocating for policy that expand voting rights and access. The first election we worked in was in the in the U.S. Senate race. And NBC News is now calling Doug Jones the apparent winner. In a special nationally followed election, Democrat Doug Jones and Republican Roy Moore fought for a Senate seat in Alabama. And for the first time in 25 years, Alabama elected a Democrat to the Senate. And the black vote was key for the Jones win, with 96% of black voters backing him. We use some new tools, new technologies to help uh, concentrate on getting out the vote. And that's what black voter turnout increased drastically and that there was an overperformance of black voters in that particular election cycle. But we wanted to also send a message of affirmation of how black voters saw themselves. We would convene these listening circles um, to talk to communities about what was it that they were concerned about, how did they see power, did they want power, and what did that look like? Say your name. Mm -hmm. My name is Evelyn Blair. If you don't get them in the primary, you won't get them that far. Because some mm -hmm. people just go to that one, but we got to start in the primary to get those people. That's right. That's right. This is primary day in Georgia. Lines in Atlanta stretching for blocks. Some standing in the rain, forced to wait hours to cast a ballot. You've been here about three hours. I'm not leaving. In Georgia, where I live and I am a voter, on election day, what we saw is we saw long lines. I myself, it took me three hours to vote. We also got a phone call at 10.30 p.m. that there were 300 African-American voters um, waiting in line to vote. It is 11.45 in Georgia, and guess what? We're still at a polling site. The last voter at that site did not leave until 12.37 a.m. I had to take my, uh, my client to go vote because she wanted to go vote in Sandy Springs, and we was in and out in seven minutes. But I live here in Southwest Atlanta, so this is where I have to go vote, and I've been in line for at least 30 minutes already, and I don't know how long I'm gonna be here. I waited for maybe like two to two and a half hours. The voting delay occurred in Fulton County, home to 15 cities, including Atlanta, which has a majority black population. The uh, primaries in June made me think of what it would be like to live through a tsunami or other natural disaster. And in a sense, it was a natural disaster. Fulton County election official admitted that there were problems and blamed the delays on an unexpected surge in absentee voting and a reduced number of voting locations due to the pandemic. We found ourselves with 20% less places than we normally would use for an election. This made it impossible to do a good job, and we didn't. A democracy docket investigation conducted of Georgia's presidential primaries found that in polling places where the majority of voters were minorities, there was an average wait time of 51 minutes. Meanwhile, at polling locations where white voters were the majority, the average wait time was six minutes. And I 
Voter suppression isn't a new battle for black voters in Georgia. In the 2018 governor's race, then-Secretary of State Republican Brian Kemp faced off against Stacey Abrams. Kemp's office was accused of purging more than 500,000 voters from the rolls back in 2017. An analysis obtained by the Associated Press reveals racial disparity. Georgia's population is 32% black, but the list of voter registrations on hold with Kemp's office was 70% black. In 2018, his office said that they simply conduct regular list maintenance of the voter rolls to ensure election integrity. So you saw the women's suffrage movement. What was interesting is that while African-American, while black women stood with white women in the women's suffrage movement, and we were an instrumental force in that movement, we did not secure the right to vote for ourselves to even 50 years later. On March 7, 1965, a group of protesters gathered at the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, calling for voting rights with 25-year-old John Lewis leading the way. We intend to march to Montgomery. It was the first in a series of planned marches from Selma to Montgomery. Often what you saw in the Deep South, that people were not even allowed to register to vote. That when they went to register to vote, would walk up and the registrar would say, in order to register, you have to tell me how many jelly beans are in a jar or just some ridiculous questions that they would ask him as a tool to prevent them from being able to register. It was in August, August the 6th, 1965, where the Voting Rights Act was passed. And it was passed because of the work of those folks on the Evan Pettus Bridge and the work all of those years that activists had been doing to demand the right to vote. In 2013, the Supreme Court invalidated a key part of the Voting Rights Act, and activists alleged that the Supreme Court's decision empowered some states to disenfranchise voters. So we start seeing in the states that we worked in and lived in voter ID laws, strict voter ID laws. We start seeing a massive closing of polls. We start seeing um, suppression tactics um, raise up. Congressman John Lewis risked his life to expand voting rights. Latasha sees him as an instrumental figure that paved the way for the work that she's doing today. We must never, we must never ever forget the sacrifice of men and women who put their bodies on the line for freedom and equality. What they taught me is they taught me what is possible. Where do I and my generation want to take the next the nation next? We need a radically reimagined America and the way that we conduct voting um, and elections, that ultimately we should have universal voting. We should have same day registration. There should be more, instead of where it's been very decentralized, the voting process, that there may, needs to be more alignment around that. This isn't about the Republicans or the Democrats. The bottom line is voting is a nonpartisan issue. Every single citizen should have free and fair access to the ballot. When I say black voters, you say matter. Black voters, black voters. When I say black voters, you say matter. Black voters. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.